video on hoof trimming. Um, I've been getting a ton of requests on this. Um, I know there's a lot of new beginners out there that have no idea where to start when it comes to trimming a hoof on a goat. Um, there's a lot of different techniques that people use. Some people use um, uh, just regular mechanical clippers that go in your hand. They look like prunes for cutting flowers or something. Um, there's people out there that use something called a hoof boss, which is a, an electric tool that has like a blade on it that files and cuts down the, um, the hooves really, really, really pristine with a super clean line. Um, some people can be intimidated by those. Uh, we personally don't use them. Uh, we've been using the handle ones for as long as we've been in goats. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, different tips and different techniques when you're using those. Um, we're gonna show you our way today. And it may not work for everybody, um, but it works for us. Uh, we've got a doe here on the stand. She's an older doe. Um, she's actually our herd sire's mom. So she's a little up there in age, but she's still in tremendous shape. Uh, she's got tremendous feet, but her feet are just needing a little bit of maintenance. Um, she's got some uh, overgrowth on her toes. She's got some rolling of her ankles a little bit. Um, it's not so bad that it's causing lameness or irritation with the way she walks or moves. Um, it's not causing any pasture issues, so it's not causing a problem at all to her. Uh, she's just been raising kids out here in the pasture, and we've kind of let her do her thing with her kids, and it's time for some maintenance. So. Uh, we figured she'd be a good goat to um, use as a video piece because you can kind of see um, when you let their feet grow out a little bit the problems that you can run into and then we can kind of show you some corrective measures in the before and after um, so i'm gonna let mom do the feet today i can do feet i don't mind to do feet it's just not my thing if i can get by without doing it i don't do it um, she's the one that does all the feet on here um, she's kind of gotten a really good rhythm with all the goats she really knows what she's doing she can move quick with the with the clippers and then you know totally do a great job and get them all done whereas me and dad will be on there working on the same animal for quite a while um, trying to get perfect on on the hoof um, so I'm gonna let her do the explaining um, and I'm gonna kind of video she doesn't want to show her face today but you'll see her hands and down there on the hoof so you can kind of see and then I'll do it before of what the goat looks like all the way around with her hooves and then I'll do an after. So we're gonna get started. Okay, so as you can see, looking at her from a side profile, she doesn't have a whole lot of issues going on with her pasturings at all. Um, she doesn't have any issues with her feet being so far up in the air that she can't put um, most of her hoof pad on the ground. She is still in shape with her hips. She's still in shape with her shoulders. So there's no lameness going on with her hoof um, being as grown out as they are. But you can see the kind of um, turning out of the hoof right there and the kind of the long cracked part. Let me get a little closer. So you can kind of see right in here where it's kind of cracked, that's normal, um, very common, and they don't even have to be in bad shape for that to happen. Um, and then over here, this other back foot here, you can see that the toe wants to kind of curl underneath a little bit which is what's causing that ankle rolling when you look at it from the front view you can kind of see that ankle roll a little bit more and then you know the front feet here are not in too terrible shape they've uh, held up a lot better than the back feet but as you can see her pasterns are still very very strong on both front and back so it's not causing a huge issue okay so i'm the hoof trimmer of the family not my favorite thing to do but it's just what I do and I start out we've had these probably I don't know 15 years these same set of clippers here and just sharpen them and we keep on going but this is my favorite thing to use uh, I've tried the hoof boss and I I'm just not a fan for myself I don't like the way it feels I know there's a lot of people that do like the hoof boss and that's great but this is just, I feel comfortable with this uh, set of clippers in my hand. You can find these uh, online, uh, Valley Vet, um, probably Amazon, a lot of different places. Jeffers Farm Supply. Jeffers Farm Supply. So what I'm gonna do is basically, I'm gonna start from front and work my way all the way around to the back, to the front again. Um, if I find any issues, such as a little bit of foot rot going on, this is what we use, Microseptic. I think it's kind of hard to get right now. Um, it's always done the trick for us if we have some small problems going on. 
Um, if you do get this, always, always use gloves, always. And when you're putting it on a goat, only put it on the spot uh, that you're treating. Don't get it on the skin of the goat. It's very caustic. So um, that's, this is just a choice of treatment that we use for small problems. So I'm gonna get started here. All right, hopefully she's compliant. As you can see, she's got some growth on her, uh, on her feet here. And w basically what I'm gonna try to do is there's a, there's a natural line that a goat has on the hoof. And you can probably see it right there. Don't always get it always a perfect line, but that's what you're trying to aim for. So I always start here at the toe, at the front, or the, the front of the hoof and I just take off. Which is the toe. Right, the toe. But I've done this for so long, I kind of know, you know, when you're, if you're beginning, please don't just start taking off chunks because you're getting trouble. Just start taking off small little pieces. And that's one good thing about having these handheld clippers like this is you have a little bit more control um, with those hoof bosses and grinders and stuff. Um, you know, you can kind of take a little bit too much in the very beginning and not mean to because it's so um it's much more vigorous than than this is um not being the sweetest in the world now as you can see i'm getting closer and closer to that natural hoof line and you're always going to see some pink uh when you're about ready to get there you need to stop and my husband's world worst about taking a goat and mauling it to death um, and you just when you start getting down to the pink which I'm not quite there yet uh, it just takes time and experience um, my first goats that I did they look like ducks when I was done with them I'm trying to get all that dead stuff off Now, and don't be scared. You see the pink? We're, we're, we're there. So that's when we want to back off and I kind of want to even this out a little bit in the middle. And you can see, see the line? You can see that natural hoof line. I'm trying to get a little bit more on the sides. And then I'm going to start on the other side. And like I was saying, don't be scared to take um, hoof off. I've seen a lot of people that are new, um, especially kids that are trimming like their weather speed um, or their project animal for 4-H or something, and they start trimming their feet and they barely, barely, barely take just that brown off. And then the hoof ends up being way too long. And then they look like they're wearing like moon shoes or something. <laughs> um, so don't be afraid to take off part of the hoof like that. Don't be afraid to get in there and take off several layers um, because as long as you're not seeing that pink line right away, you have a lot of playing room to go. And sometimes, uh, mom hasn't done it yet, but when you're new, pick up and set the foot down a lot and quite often so you can get a look at where your line is and how the foot is sitting. If you do that um, in the beginning, you know, often you'll finally get really uh, now, good at figuring out where your hoof is. Between that other foot and this one and how that brought that. So you kind of see, um, that's definitely straightened up that hoof a lot. Straightened up the front of her foot there to where it's facing forward with her knees. Um, she's very symmetrical right here um, and facing the same direction. It's very even along the bottom. She doesn't have a toe going under either direction. Her ankle is straight up and down like it should and her pasterns are still strong. Um, when you look at the other foot next to it, you can kind of see the difference there between the two. So, I mean, like I said, she wasn't too terribly bad off, but she definitely needed some maintenance and any further uh, growth could cause a little bit more issues with the way she's walking. Um, but that's, I mean, you can tell we didn't have to really work really hard to get that there. Um, so those are just kind of the, the first steps to that. When we get to the back feet, they can be a little bit more trickier as you can see her back feet. 
are a little bit more grown out so you might have to do a little bit more correcting and we'll get to that in here in a minute. Least favorite part. All right, so you can see we've still got a lot of growth where that toe is turning over. Um, get on a top view here. I kind of want to clean all the junk out so you can see what's going on. And so far she hasn't really had any major signs of any hoof rot or anything. Um, her feet have been fairly clean unless that's what you're getting into now. I can't tell. Well, most of it will be screen. cut out. She may not be a good example to show you the signs of uh, foot rot, but we might get one um, when we start trimming more feet soon and I might pop out the camera and show you guys that as we get to it. Every goat is different. Every goat has different feet. Um, some have harder feet than others. Some have softer feet than others. Those with the softer hooves have a little bit more, um, they are a little more prone to getting the, the foot rot and it's normal. It's not a coal factor. It's nothing, it doesn't mean anything's wrong with your goat. Um, it's all about environment, weather, uh, where you live. Um, it's really, it has nothing, you can trim their feet as often as you're supposed to and keep them trimmed down, but foot rot is inevitable um, in every farm, just kind of depending on uh, where you live and how much rain you get and the moisture that's in the ground that they're on. So you can't really avoid foot rot. Just some goats are a little bit more prone than others. I'm in that pink right now. I'm gonna try to take a little bit more off that edge. You see the pink? So basically, I've tried to keep both sides even a little bit more. You can see the difference if you come around to the side. Big difference. A huge difference in the way the foot is laying. Um, it's turned completely forward like it's supposed to, following in line with her hawk and her hips, um, her pasture is actually strengthened even though they weren't really weakened before they've definitely straightened a little bit more um what little bit more they could they've definitely um straightened back up a little bit and you can tell that her ankle isn't rolling in the hoof isn't going inwards and it's a huge difference before and after what we have on the hooves here all right here's the other back foot we're gonna do the same thing so far, I haven't found anything to treat as far as any hoof rot. Hold on, just so here we are on the other back foot. And I'm going to do the same exact thing. I've already taken some off that side. And If you're just beginning, like I said, you know, take time, put the foot down, go back, look at it, evaluate it, and see what you need to do. As you can look from the back part, you can kind of tell that this piece over here, that side of her foot, the right side of her foot, um, is still a little bit shorter than the inside. So mom's going to have to go back in. Um, now that when you put it down, see when you have it up, sometimes you don't always notice. Um, but when you put it down, you can kind of see how her foot is, is sitting flat on the ground and you can kind of evaluate and see where you need to improve, where you need to take more off, um, or where sometimes you may just need to leave it alone. And sometimes you can get so, um, like if you wait so long and they get so bad to the point that you'll have to go back and yeah, do it. You will have to go back, um, 
in a couple weeks or so to kind of give it time to grow a little bit more. You can kind of see from a profile, she's standing so much better on her feet. Um, when you zoom in on them here, they're not absolutely perfect because we'll probably go back in in a few weeks and kind of fix those back feet just a little bit more after they grow back out. Um, that way we don't quicker today. Um, and then when you look at the front, it's the same thing, a nice clean foot that is laying or sitting flat on the ground. Um, it straightened up her feet and legs a whole lot. She's not any longer rolling in on her toes. Um, except for like this back foot here. And that was the worst one out of all of them. And you can kind of see that it still uh, wants to turn in just a little bit, but it by no means is bad. I've seen them so bad that they're walking on the sides of their, their feet uh, or so down on their pasterns because the, the toe and the heel both are just so far grown out that like mom mentioned earlier, they look like they have duck feet. Um, but you can kind of look at this hoof here and we'll go back in when she grows out that one side, the right now it's on the left, the left side there. And we're able to kind of correct that foot a little bit. In the next couple weeks, when we go back and touch her up a little bit, she'll have that foot just like this one over here. That kind of concludes our hoof trimming video today. Um, we didn't really have an extreme case to show you. We didn't have any foot rot to show you today. Um, maybe the next goat that we break out and we do their feet, we'll find some hoof rot. Hopefully not, but hopefully so, just so I can give you guys an educational piece to kind of look at and reference. Um, because not everybody knows what they're looking at first. Some may think it's just manure um, on their foot and some may, you know, freak out and think that it's the end of the world and their goat's crippled and they're gonna die. Um, and by no means is that the case. It's definitely treatable. It's definitely manageable um, and it's inevitable in every herd. But uh, hopefully next time we'll have one that we can kind of give an example of so that way you guys can kind of see um, what hoof rot really looks like. Um, so that concludes the video today. Um, we've got a doe on the stand now that has a lot better feet than she did when she walked up here. Um, hopefully you guys find this uh, informational. Um, like I said, we use the, the manual hoof uh, trimmers. We don't use the electric hoof boss kind, but by no means is that the right or wrong way. Um, it's just our way, it works for us. There's lots of people that use that method and there's lots of people that go the other routes. Um, everybody has their own luck with different things. So kind of play around with what you want. Um, if you do go to use the hoof boss or anything, or you do go to use those clippers and um, let's say you get your first goat out, get them on the stand, trim their feet, and you just completely um, just ruin your whole first job, uh, take some pictures, send them to us. Um, Tell us, uh, take some before and after pictures if you have questions. And if you think you're gonna have questions, go ahead and be prepared to take those pictures. Send them to us, uh, reach out to us and ask us. Um, we're more than welcome, more than happy uh, to help you guys in any way we can. I know there's lots of new people out there um, and nobody gets in this business knowing everything. So you kinda gotta start from somewhere. Um, but yeah, don't hesitate at all. Take those pictures, take videos, um, do whatever you can to kinda reach out to us if you have questions. We're always happy to help. Um, you can message us, you can comment back to this video. Either way, we're here for you.